Welcome to London's Docklands, the home of Robot Wars. This is where all the metallic mayhem takes place. Now, if you're like me and you've wondered how it all began, then you're in for a treat, because in this very special programme, we get to see how the first series of Robot Wars got to the screen. Confirmation, please, that the arena is clear and safe for combat. Arena clear. The arena is clear. Shots of the robot ears, please, on two. Stand by. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Robot Wars. Keep eyes open. Three, two, one. Activate. Robot Wars first began in this country in about November 95 when three of the teams from America, who essentially they came across as ambassadors for the sport of Robot Wars, uh, Thor, the Machine and the Master, they came across and took part in the British Open Robot Wars competition, which uh, essentially in reality meant that we built very hastily six robots of our own, which then took on the Americans, didn't do particularly well, but uh, off the back of that showcase, the BBC commissioned the series. And Q Jeremy. Man may have tempered the spectre of nuclear evil, but tonight I have the unenviable task of reporting that warfare has been taken out of man's hands. We're now at the mercy of machines, and a battle the likes of which we've never seen before is about to begin. From King Edward VI Grammar School, Tracy. Ah, uh, might have a girl's name, but nothing ladylike about our Tracy, made of welded steel with deadly spikes and a very low centre of gravity, only 20 centimetres high. The teams that actually got involved in the first series came from a very diverse set of backgrounds. A handful of schools, quite a few universities, uh, engineering companies, a few blue chip companies. From Bodmin Community College, Roadblock. Now time for a demonstration of the road gauges pulling power. Weighing in at 82 and a half kilograms and over 1.45 meters long, all the signs suggest that this is a robot to be reckoned with, carrying a deadly circular saw. Stop the car, stop the car. <laughs> From Nottingham, Shogun. Built around a complex chassis featuring two Sinclair C5 motors and a two-stage gearbox, Shogun can achieve a maximum speed of seven miles an hour, and weapons include a motorized forklift and the honor of the samurai. Two days, a 16-bar foot diameter Clint sweeper off the floor. We have to face a house robot and stop on there as long as possible. What do we know about the house robot? Zip on. There was a few sort of loose concept sketches um, based um, on, on the sort of um, really sort of trying to get people's imagination going for the whole programme. And these were really some very way out sort of um, robots. The idea of the house robots, the gladiators, came clear really. I then understood what we were required to do as far as building the house robot was concerned. We only had six and a half weeks to build everything and design everything. We were up against building four fighting vehicle robots capable of fighting against other robots and smashing bits off of them and at the same time looking good as well. And cut the sort of the when we actually came to build the house robot Matilda it would be very much a sort of an organic type of looking vehicle or, or robot and it would definitely have a sort of a personality with, with eyes and, uh, and sort of tusks or something like that. It took three to four, four attempts in the sculpt of the clay to get it right. I mean, I really wasn't happy with it, and I had to keep getting it changed each time, which annoyed the people that were sculpting it. But at the end of the day, it was really worth it. You um, sculpt the body up, and then you take a plaster mould of the clay, and then we, within the plaster mould, we fill it with fibreglass and fibreglass tissue. Fibreglass is an excellent material, very easy to work with, absorbs the impacts, and is incredibly durable as well. This is a, a ground plan. It's 
the set drawn to a scale that just plots everything that we're going to have on, uh, on the day. The, the reason we make a model is so that we can present our ideas in three dimensions so the production team know what we're, we're going to make for them. I enjoy going to Scrap Girls and looking for things because it's great. You uncover all sorts of uh, gems that you don't expect to find. We want bigger stuff that's more unusual shape. Like this. Yeah, you'll just turn around and say, right, I want this, 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 this. And, and then we just make up a lorry line. A quantity of... I mean, normally... But the scrap yard in particular is used a lot in the film and television industry. They provide a lot of things for um, Star Wars and Judge Dredd, that type of movie. From Nuneaton, Dreadnought. The fiberglass protected dreadnought runs off a 12 volt starter motor salvaged from a Morris Marina at five miles an hour. Not the fastest robot in the field, but certainly the heaviest, weighing in at 92.6 kilos. Have you encountered any problems so far in the construction process? Well, we've had a few problems, but we managed to straighten most of those out. Uh, we've, we've got one problem though: that we've improved Rage's, Road Rage's pulling power, but we just, we just can't seem to control it. From Gloucester, Body Hammer. A copper coloured cone looks a little bit like a coal scuttle powered by four 18 volt domestic drill motors, weighing in at 78.9 kilograms, quite heavy, but also quite nippy at nine miles an hour. I'm your commentator, Jonathan Pierce, and these are the house robots. Two main features are the chainsaw here at the rear, which can go up and down onto the prey, causing extreme damage. And the uh, flippers at the front, which uh, scoop underneath the prey, flip them over uh, to reveal the underneath, which the chainsaw can do its business. Prehistoric Matilda's next up with hydraulic tusks and a truly lethal chainsaw tail running at over 3,000 revs per minute. All very safe, of course. And this one's got a gas flamethrower in here. It's got a turret that turns round where the flame comes out of. You've got to have the mechanism in to turn the uh, turret around with the gearing and everything else. Um, it's also got an off-cut saw, a petrol off-cut saw on the back here. Keeping order, Sergeant Bass featuring a savage circular saw and a flamethrower certain to leave all opponents hot under the collar. Introducing Shunt, a power-packed robot capable of pulling a Land Rover. Which, um, I suppose would be the best type of robot to go for the, the sumo event. Sumo! But it'll actually defend itself very well, because anything ramming at it, hopefully the robot will be able to turn itself into position, and anything will just go shooting at, turn itself over or fly over the top. And it's Killatron in the pink, just in case you've forgotten. At the back is more towards a bulldozer type of effect. Um, again, um, we can use it for ramming or defending. And doom! And in this sort of area, we can have a, a large um, lever with a, a an ice pick. And cleave all opponents in two with that sharpened steel axe. It's got a petrol strimmer that's been modified to take an angle grinder blade. And on the front, it'll have jaws. And then the cut-off saw. And dead metal with the pneumatic pincers and a steel cutting arm. This is where robots come when they when they finish robot wars. So what are you doing here, Stu? Just looking for interesting shapes that we can use on the set. Uh, so we can tie them to uh, mesh panels. Let's get some nice sculptural shapes out of this uh, uh, salvage. That's good, because it's lightweight. Huh? Heather, look at that. But the one thing that they 
can uh, that, that can weigh properly, that they know what the weight is. I don't think we need too many items much bigger than that. No, it's kind of if that's the, that's the scale of it.